Have you watched Five Nights at Freddy's yet? I think so. Maybe it seems like you're here to press them for a reason. All right, guys. What up, you guys? It's me, Odie Arcadio. We're back at again with another video, and this time we're going to talk about the spoilers in Five Nights at Freddy's. If you watched my previous review, I'm going to springboard off of that and actually get into some heavy spoilers. So if you haven't watched Five Nights at Freddy's yet, go watch it. It's in theaters. It's on Peacock. And I feel like you already know most of the plot line of this movie, and I'm going to just drag it down to this. Let me start at the beginning with the opening kill. So the opening, which was interesting, is an actual, um, I could say, Easter egg for the games. Jeremy Fitzgerald actually hiding or trying to run from the animatronics as he's trying to escape the restaurant hiding through the vents, just like in FNAF 2, only to get actually captured by Foxy and spring-locked into the new Freddy head, which is interesting to the fact that they actually use some of the aspect of the games where if the animatronics catch you, it'll stuff you inside a Freddy Fazbear suit. I like that they added that, but... This is where the actual story transitions into the mini game elements where we actually get an opening sequence showing the events of the actual murders of the five children in actual video game format like the cutscenes at the end of FNAF 2 and in the midpoints of FNAF 3 and 4. I like that aspect showing William don the actual spring Bonnie suit in an actual purple, fo purple color format which was interesting to me that they still kept that purple man Easter egg. And now we transition on to Mike where he's having dreams about his dead brother where this is where the changes I feel like from the game actually hurt this movie to me where he's not an Afton. Mike Mike Schmidt is just his own new character and I'm gonna get I'm gonna come back to this later on because it's gonna need more context. He's looking for a job. He got fired from his last security gig thinking about his brother thinking that this kid was actually being kidnapped and now that he's actually looking back at his track record to see look for a new job William Afton actually escorts him to the Freddy Fazbear Freddy Fazbear Pizzeria and actually have him start the night shift and this part is where I find it interesting where we get to see Matthew Lillard as William Afton and he's actually peculiar where he's smart he knows it he knows what he's doing but then again that little detail I don't know if anybody's caught this but the beginning when um uh, he's looking at his file, and he's like Michael Schmidt, and then looks at his last name, then looks at him, and takes a closer look. Part of me felt like that could have been at least a hint or a slight nod that he could have been his, he could actually be his real life son, Michael Afton, as in in the games. But that's not as is, as we really find out later on that it's just a theory that Michael Schmidt in this movie could actually be related to. Henry Emily, where there's later on as he's looking through the training video, you actually get to see the creator of the animatronics, Henry Emily, in the background as he's fixing up on the exoskeleton of one of them. It looks like the same guy who's played uh, Mike's dad earlier on in the flashbacks, where it's the same guy, and I don't know if it's confirmed by the studio yet or if there's any rumors or anybody confirming that that's the same actor, but if so, I have a feeling that that guy is Henry Emily and that changing the backstory to now... Um, Michael is an Emily, and Garrett, his brother, was killed by William Afton as revenge. That could be an interesting thing we could see later on play out in the story, but let's get back to the movie. So now we see um, in an actual Easter egg format that the first two nights of the first two nights of the game, no sound whatsoever from the animatronics, just like in the game where night one, uh, William gives Michael the instructions on what to do. He sleeps during the first night shift, wakes up at 6 a.m., None of the animatronics have moved or have caused any disruption. Night two is when we, things get really interesting when we get to see Vanessa. And Vanessa, she, from the looks of it, her introduction made it seem like she was actually Vanessa from the, from the Security Breach games, adapted into the first film. She was a regular cop checking up on the pizzeria. And after night two, it's funny that um, Mike doesn't notice anything wrong with the pizzeria, seeing that um, Vanessa gives a bit of backstory to the five children and that he started to notice them in his dreams, which I kind of like the detail that um, any time Mike saw one of the kids, each of them had their own element of horror. Like, we already know each of the kids represent the animatronics, but looking at them one by one, each of them has an aspect that could have been scary, like the kid who sliced at Mike dressed up as Foxy with the hook, and he wakes up with an actual slash, which, impossible. But to me, I feel like 
if we were to incorporate a couple of the scares into this movie, it would have made a bit more sense to actually have Mike dream out the events. And then when he wakes up, he sees Foxy or somebody in front of him. And then he'd run back to the office, close the doors or something like that. But we went the slow pace route and we actually went to a more mysterious route. And this is interesting because we get to see a lot of a lot of YouTubers in cameo. We knew this, but some of the ones I already knew from the trailers, Corey Kenshin was one of them. Um, I can tell there was a lot of YouTubers involved in the backgrounds of the pizzeria, like the employee of the month. But the biggest one I didn't expect was actual Matt Pat show up as Sparky's restaurant diner. And interestingly enough, that um as I'm doing this video, Matt Pat already did his whole thing on the whole finance and Freddy's experience. Which is kind of funny that the opening kit was actually supposed to be Markiplier early on, but due to scheduling and actual commitment to the Iron Lung movie, he couldn't actually join. So hopefully we get if we get a sequel to this, which by the accounts of the box office this weekend, we actually are. Hopefully Markiplier can make an appearance in the next one. And this is where I can actually shift on to the animatronics. So the third night is when um we actually get an introduction to Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. Oh, no, wait. Uh, let me backtrack that. Uh... Technically night three, but day three is when we actually get to see some burglars break into the pizzeria just to just own Mike to make him not feel like an actual um, employee and get him fired. This sequence, if the movie played on like this, mysteriously and seeing these animatronics go everybody for their victims, I would have actually loved that because one, we get to see little Easter eggs like um, Chica going into the kitchen room, which we always saw the audio, but we didn't get to see her in the kitchen. Bonnie hiding in the closet, and the actual cupcake jumping at people, which, if I'm going to be honest, the only two animatronics I feel like they actually had worth in this movie were the cupcake and Foxy, mostly because they did the most damage, and Foxy for the commitment of actually having to do the dum dum da da dum dum sounds, and actually doing the jump scare from the games as he ran towards somebody. But if we're going to get into the actual animatronics in Night 3, or should I say the actual introduction for the audience to see the characters in their eyes. This part was interesting to me where we get to see Abby, uh, Mike's sister, interact with them. And I'm looking at it from the face of a child like, okay, realistically, you guys should be more scared than you should be. And I don't see Mike actually reacting to them in a way because you're working the night shift. And if you saw actual animatronics move on their own or at least make an attempt to try to come at you or hurt you, you would run, scream, do whatever you can, and Mike is just looking at him distraught like, so yeah, moving killer animatronics. Thanks for the heads up. When you should be scared. And weirdly enough, um, the next night, which was interesting enough, where Vanessa pops in, and at this point in the movie, you're like, what's if you knew all this, there's a lot of information you're not giving me, which I feel like, there's a lot of stuff I feel like that were cut from this movie, like Vanessa's character. You only saw her through brief moments when um, during Mike's shifts. And you don't get a lot of backstory onto her until the reveal later on in the movie that she's William Afton's daughter. And that part got me confused because nothing in her showed that she knew everything about William Afton. But later as she was like, oh, I try to warn you in the best way I can. That made no sense to me. That felt kind of stupid and redundant. But... Me, as an individual, I have to look up the time to see how much time we got in this movie because I feel like we're missing a lot of information here. And we're like around 10 minutes left in the movie and I'm like, okay, so we're in our 10 minutes left, but where's the whole, where's the spring trap stuff? And it's not until later on we get to see the animatronics kidnap Abby, actually trying to put her in a baby suit, which was weirdly enough a cool nod but then again there's a lot of other animatronics in the background you didn't even notice that scott weirdly enough with deep cuts actually added sparky the dog which was a fake animatronic people thought they saw in the in the background of one of the cameras which had like eyes and a mouth but people made their own theories as to who that character is but it's kind of funny that scott actually incorporated that character into the lore and actually weirdly enough shadow freddy which I saw in one of the one of the promotional arts for this movie, which I was going to talk about, but I said, wait a minute, let me see this movie in context so I can actually talk about it, because I don't know if a lot of people know it, but we'll see where that goes. And it's kind of funny that the end, the very end of this movie is the same way I predicted it, and I can guess all, all Finance and Freddy's fans knew about this, the spring lock scene, and William Afton, where Mike, Matthew Lillard actually popped up as Spring Bonnie, 
and the way he moves in that suit, I gotta say, if the whole, like, not the whole movie, but I can say the last act of this movie would have been William Afton actually coming into the shadows, actually showing his true Spring Bonnie self and having to Mike run from not just him, but all four animatronics, that would have been a good sequence. But we get to see um, William Afton quote unquote kill um, Vanessa and Abby actually using a way to look at the pictures on the wall and actually show the animatronics that what William Afton did to them and their spirits locked inside the suits. And at this point, I'm like, okay, so we're nearing the, a couple minutes. What's going to happen? And we actually see the cupcake bite into Spring Bonnie's rib. Not exactly rib. I don't even know what that call it. The piece right there where it activates the spring lock sequence. And I got to say, with this, the limitations of PG-13 actually didn't make the sequence as cool as I thought in my mind because I feel like I'm too desensitized with YouTube and their version of the of the way the fans interpreted the scene, the way we see Springtrap in the third game. But in this, it felt a bit interesting, the fact that some of the gore scenes in this movie were a bit on the nose. But then again, with the limitations they had, they tried to make it at least as graphic as they could. Like, earlier on, you saw the babysitter that was taking care of Abby. She got bit in half by Freddy. Was that the bite of 87? Which I kind of thought in my head the same way with this. And the way the spring lock actually clocked into his suit, into his stomach, his ribs, his arms. It was interesting enough. Even him quoting the line from the games, I always come back. That was really put, but... I feel like it didn't make sense. It felt, the fans, they know what that means, but you haven't died before yet. So I don't feel like any point of view saying, I will always come back makes sense. But okay, we'll see in the next game. We'll see in the next movie. As the animatronics drag um, William along and all three of our main protagonists exit the restaurant. Um, Vanessa is taking, taking care of in the hospital, still in a coma. As um, Mike and Abby are still living on their lives, looking for a new life, as we flash back to the pizzeria and actually see William Acton, Spring Bonnie, still alive, actually locked inside the kitchen as Golden Freddy closes the door on him one last time to make him die and stay remain in the suit the same way that he did. And that's not all. The credits, magnificent. With the actual Living Tombstone version of the Five Nights at Freddy's theme we've heard all our lives. I was actually surprised that they actually used it because I had a feeling they were. Because they used that at the Halloween Horror Nights at Universal. So I'm like, you're going to have to use that song here at some point. But I don't know where. Credits. Perfect. And our mid credit scene where it shows Corey Kenshin back again in the taxi cab. And Balloon Boy coming inside giving him one little last scare. And weirdly enough, Balloon Boy, I like the fact that they still incorporated some of the other animatronics in this. Where we didn't get to see Balloon Boy, but we got to see a Balloon Boy figure. So that tells me, okay, so the other characters are still part of this. The, the FNAF 2 cast, they might show up in the next movie or might not. Because I did hear that they're going to incorporate everything after FNAF 1. So technically the timeline of this movie is going to be going off FNAF 1, 3. Maybe leading to 6 with William dying in the fire. Don't know if it's going to go the same route. But for the actual post post credit scenes... This was going to be, this is interesting because after the Living Tombstone song, we get to hear the actual puppet music box theme. The, you know, you already know as you wind up the music box and you hear the theme as it plays. That was making me think, okay, so the puppet is going to play an important part in the next one. Me thinking, okay, we're going to go back into the past. But it doesn't seem like we're going out of the way because the very end, as in the very, very end tagline of this is the same voice like from the FNAF minigames where you get to hear the S A V E spelling out words and sentences to the kids like save me or save them. We actually get to hear the words come find me. And at this point, it could be a lot of speculation to what that could mean because one, it could actually be William Afton making a signal to come find him and actually revive him from the pizzeria. Or should I say him actually transforming us to his new form of the spring of spring trap. The other could be a theory, and it's just a theory that I believe that this could actually be in reference to Garrett or the puppet. Where I know they're going to make changes in the games, and each of the characters are going to represent something else. Like um, like how in the games, Elizabeth Afton, Mike's sister, is actually supposed to be the embodiment of 
a baby or um ballerina i can't remember her name from sister location and there was an actual baby suit in the movie which she was supposed to be the host of but for this i feel like with garrett still missing and not missing or should i say dead quote unquote dead who am i kidding he's dead already but i feel like if the spirit that's going to be incorporated in the puppet could be garrett the same way mike is seeing him in his dreams and if the puppet or any other of the fnaf 2 cast is going to play an important role in the second one hopefully we get a sequel as fast as we can because of the strike and i could just say looking back a second time at this because i have to watch it again just to be sure if i actually like this movie it's actually solid i might have said a couple things as a fan but looking at it and appreciating this it's like a new piece of fnaf lore seeing that we got the game version we got the book version now we have the movie version to incorporate to and all the theories and backstory we can pinpoint in the backgrounds we can actually use that as a new piece of fnaf lore and actually incorporate what could the sequel go because we are getting a sequel to this movie. It made $130 million in less than two days. And I feel like if they're going to learn a bit of their mistakes from this movie to the next one, we have to make it rated R. We already saw the test with PG-13 audience. Even if it was PG-13, there's a lot of people and this fan base enough to go and see a Finance of Freddy's movie and actually pay a ticket for it. Which was interesting enough because I didn't know how this movie was going to land with video game fans. Because I remember around the super mario bros super mario bros movie when i saw it everybody was hyped up for it and kids adults everybody was actually having fun with it actually incorporating with the studio and actually following along with the easter eggs and references for the games where everybody understood what it was but this movie i wanted to actually think about it because i'm like okay we have blumhouse it's an actual horror game based property let's see what the fans think before i actually judge it on my own and as a fan i actually loved it as a as a guy critiquing it it's just fine but i'm looking at it from a sense of as a movie it's okay it's not bad it's not good i'm in between but i had a good time watching it and if it made an impression on me i would might as well say it had did its job and i can't wait for the sequel and i guess that's all the spoilers i can count in this thank you guys for watching leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time bye guys